It is 5 p.m., so I'd like to open the Finance Committee meeting for October 26, 2021. Um, first item on the agenda is call to order, so we got that taken care of. I have one announcement before we get to the minutes, um, which is, I, we talked about this last week, but there's one opening on the Finance Committee. Um, we have, I talked to, well, I emailed Dan Graves earlier. Um, there are two applicants so far, um, so what we decided was that we would close, we, he, this Friday. So if anybody else is interested in applying to be on the finance committee, please get an email into Dan Graves by this Friday and he will um, consider the applicants and um, um, make a decision after that. Great. Um, all right, so minutes. Do you wanna say anything about minutes? Um. We have the minutes for the, the 19th, the meeting of the 19th, yeah. very brief. Um, we also have, uh, I, I brought copies of the one from the previous meeting in case anybody needs it. I'd like to make a motion that we approve. I make a motion that we approve both sets of minutes. Do you wanna do them together? I think we already approved the ones for the 13th. Okay. Thir yeah, the 13th were approved during. Great. And my motion is to approve the most recent of the 19th. Seconded. All right, any discussion? What's the date of those? October 19th. It was the joint meeting with the library. Right. So the minutes are pretty much, we had a joint meeting with the library. Okay. Got it. Uh, any further discussion? No, let's do a roll call vote. John Paterk, abstain. Julie Chalfin, aye. James Cambius, aye. Allison Vanderbilt and I. John Pereski of Stain, I wasn't there. Okay, so that passes three zero two. Next item on the agenda is to look at the September financial statement. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments on the September statement? Nope. I do. Go ahead. I, Brenda, I don't understand the carry forward. If it's I, if it's an appropriation like capital, I can understand that. But can you explain how, like revaluation? We'll use that as an example. Uh, count 142, 5400 is fourteen thousand six hundred twelve carry forward. Is okay. that from? That's Yep, that's, that's for the quinquennial uh, recertification. And there were some projects that the assessors had asked Patriot Properties to do um, that didn't get done because of COVID. So the appropriation was carried forward so they could, they could um, only ask for their 20,000 and then carry forward the rest to take care of those additional uh, items that they needed to take care of. I, I don't know what they were exactly, but that was one of those items. No, I'm just trying, I don't understand the process, I guess. I mean, who determines what can be carried forward and what can't be? So we explain this every has, year. Yeah, it happens every year. Each department um, sends me, I, I, I send out a request asking if anybody has any encumbrances or any carry forwards. So each department requests a carry forward of me. And then I go through in detail with each department head to find out why. And then I go through those with Casey, her and I go through them one by one and we make a decision as to whether they will be um, carried forward or not. Um, so I do that, I even request the school to tell me what they wanna have carried forward, that kind of thing. So this is just a, it's something that happens every single year. Scrap paper, so I'll copy the back. Okay, thank you. Sure. Um, anybody else have questions on the? We spent 40, 40 some odd percent of our workers' comp did. Um, so work, workers' comp is generally, uh, 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 we pay for that in July. Oh, okay. 
And then in October, November, they do an audit, and then we do a small additional payment. Um, that one's a hard one to budget for. We, we never can figure out how they uh, figure their credits, but we've been getting a lot of credits over the last few years, and we budget for some, but we don't want to be too optimistic that we're going to get everything. So um, it's nice when we don't have to spend all of that appropriation. Anybody else have questions on this? That, that flows into free cash at the end of the following. Correct. The, um, on the statement of change in fund balances, mm -hmm. so there's a number here for CPA funds, 1.8-ish million. Um, has the funding, does that still include the money that's destined for the park? It does not. So, so, so that's the, already been, there's another, there's a park one. Correct. The 709? park 709. Okay. So if you add 709 to uh, fund 380, which is the CPA fund, that will give you really what your total CPA balance is. But it's, it's already partitioned, which is. Yeah, the recreation yeah. land had to be put into a capital projects fund so that we could um, spend money out of there. Beautiful. And um, so the CPA one, Fund 380, includes, that's all of the, some of it's set aside for specific purposes. That's lumped into that same account, right? Yes, that's correct. Any other questions on the funds? All right. We are blazing through our agenda. This is beautiful. Number three, checked out. All right, financial indicator spreadsheet. We're going to concentrate on items 9 through 12. Um, do you happen to have an extra that Bruce could see? I do not have an extra printed out, but I do have... Um, you might want to look at it. This number 9. Yeah. 9 through 12. It's in the car. Um, I was going to share my screen up here, but I can't get the whole thing on my Oh, there you go. I don't see that. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is indicator nine, which is at the moment called long-term debt, but after we talked about this the other night, I think we need to change the name to just debt load because it's, it's our debt. Um, so the, I think the goal of the discussion, if you look in the top left-hand corner, each of these has an assessment, favorable, marginal, or unfavorable. I just made that up. So we need to agree amongst ourselves about what that analysis should be. And then there's a couple plots and then below it, this section talks about what we should be thinking about. And then below that, this again, I just wrote a, an analysis specific to Deerfield. So that Deerfield analysis marginal is what I wrote in. Um, so long-term debt should be, is generally prohibited from being above 5% of a community's assessed valuation and if you approach this 5%, it's seen as kind of a warning sign by bond rating agencies. So we don't want to get to that 5% level or our bond rating could drop. Um, so <clears throat> kind of the, the general wisdom is that you don't want it to be zero because you want to be spending things on capital improvements and keep the town going, but you don't want it to be too high either. Um, I wrote down marginal we're at 3% right now. Um, I just, that seems like maybe, I mean, where we are right now is fine, but we have a bunch of plans for more stuff that people want to borrow more money for. So that makes me, uh, the way I viewed marginal is just something we need to pay attention to, right? Um, Definitely. Huh? Definitely. All right. Just yeah, some, go ahead. Just some thoughts on, on it. Not, not like connecting marginal. I think you probably categorized it properly. Um, but just thinking about where we are 
as a town in the period of time that we're in, like in the, in the history of the town. I'm doing a lot of zooming out um, in my other lives um, to look at like, like where are we now, where do we want to be, and I think it makes sense that we have debt and that our debt is growing in this moment because we're at this point in time where we want to invest in these projects that are going to save us in the future um, money and, and, you know, make it a better place to live and, and all of that stuff. So, like, the sewer is a big one, the library conversation, all that stuff. There's a lot of it happening right now, and I don't feel like it's isolated from COVID. It feels like it's all kind of happening now, um, and I think we need to be. I guess I guess what I'm saying is I think we need to be thoughtful about that because I don't want us to get into a situation where we can't borrow and need to. But I also think it would be foolish to be too conservative. Um, at a time when there are so many things that need to be done and we are able to do them. So, you know, leveraging grant funds and things like that, um, it's just it's a balance. But I, I agree marginalized. I think that's appropriate. Do we have a sense of how much we're likely to be borrowing next year? I mean, how or do we need to borrow any more for the uh, sewage treatment plant, for example. So the one comment first, and then you guys can. Um, so that 3.03 percent, where we are right now, that includes outstanding and unissued debt. So there is our our actual outstanding, which is 23 million 499,720, is that the number? Um, our actual outstanding debt right now is. 13.7 .7 million added to that is debt that has been approved but not yet borrowed. So there's about a 9.7 million, 9.75 million that is already approved that we expect we will be borrowing in support of the sewer. So that 3.03% includes both of those, what we already have outstanding and what we still have planned. So if we do more projects, like the other piece of the sewer project or whatever, then that would be it. John has his hand up. Okay. Um, all right, John, why don't you go first? And then Look, I, I don't understand, I guess, I don't understand authorized debt. Is that what the town is authorized? Because exactly. Because uh, it, like for 2021, outstanding and unissued is greater than authorized. I don't know how that can be. I don't know. Yeah, so if you add, so our outstanding debt is 13 million. You add unissued 9.75, it comes up to 23, which is greater than the authorized debt. Um, some of it must have, must be left from previously authorized. I, I believe so. I think some of it is, um, with, without looking at the details, because I, I did not notice that, John. Um, but I would think some of it is the school roof debt that we have and the debt that we took out to buy back uh, the Oxford property from New England Natural Acres. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. I don't know what, what the problem is. Because that wasn't debt that was authorized by town meeting. It was debt that was, well, the school roof was. The school roof was, but it was, we asked for more than we actually went and got, you know, more than we ended up doing because you got half of it paid for by the state. So right. The authorization is going to be bigger, I think, than what we actually went and got. Right. Which is counter to what we're saying. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It is. So that authorized debt number and the unissued debt numbers come off of that DLS website. Yeah. And and they get their numbers from from Barb and me when we submit right. for free cash. So um, I without looking at the details, I I don't know that I don't know the answer to that. But the 20 million is the 1 million for the clarifier. 
and the 19 million for the phase one of the South Deerfield's uh, wastewater treatment plant and upgrade. Then, and then you must have what, the, what we've authorized in the past, which would be the town garage and the school roof, which aren't, aren't listed under authorized yet, but are. But they're past. definitely there in past years. Like if yeah. you look at 2019, there's five, almost six, 5.8 right. million. But, but there's, you know, if, as, as a matter of fact, I just wrote myself a note that we've got to rescind the $1 million for the clarifier or, or what's left for the it clarifier off. because we paid off the clarifier. So yep. next spring we'll rescind that. So when we're done with the debt, we usually rescind that authorization so that our debt picture doesn't look so bad. Right. Um, you know, when we, when we don't need the, the, um, the money anymore, when we don't need that authorization. Right. So at one point in time, we had authorized, was it 1.4 million to buy Oxford initially? So then we rescinded the rest of that debt, um, which is what brought, I, I can't remember what year that was, if that was 2017, 2018. I, hmm. The original debt? Yes. That, that should have died off in about 2014. Nope, nope, because we had the debt on the books until here recently, like 2017 or 18, we paid didn't, that off. Didn't we have to go back to town meeting to, uh, because we, we changed the borrowing. We, we went from um, short-term, everything was short-term borrowing initially on that, and then we went to a long-term. Okay. It, which was, I don't know whether it was 10 years or something like that. And then we actually paid that off a couple of years early. So, so I don't know what, how they do that. Is long term debt only? Oh, no. To be honest with you. And then we have our total, our outstanding debt includes short term and long term. Maybe yeah. that's why. It could be like a debt. I think you're right, Julie. So I think you're right. That would make sense to me. The, the other thing is. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. It could be that if debt excluded long term is authorized and the other is kind of just for other debt. Right. Short -term yeah, debt. I definitely struggled a little bit with figuring yeah. out what these things, I mean, it's just listed total authorized debt. It's a spreadsheet. The thing yeah. spits it out. And yep. it, it, there's not really a discussion of what it actually means. Right. So, um, so that the, the theory is that, um, Total authorized debt is long-term debt, and total outstanding debt includes both long-term and short-term. And if you if we split out the short-term, we might find that we're below that total authorized value. I think that's a good good um, analysis. The other, the other thing there is that you're losing track of is, for example, the wastewater treatment plant. We have not borrowed the twenty million dollars. Not fully. Correct. I don't know how much we've borrowed, but well, right now so only what we needed to pay. Yeah, well, um, nine, I think. nine million three fifty for the for the phase one, but we had borrowed at the end of the fiscal year. We had borrowed five hundred and fifty four thousand for um, the clarifier. But unless we've actually spent that, we probably haven't. You'd have to talk with Barbara. We probably haven't actually borrowed it until we need to make payments. Well, that's correct. So we don't. We only borrow what we're going to need in that fiscal year because to borrow more than what we need is is kind of a waste of our money. Yes. Are we are we actually borrowing that? Yes. Amount. Yes. Or do we borrow it every month or every couple of months? No. Before? No. We borrowed. We borrowed at the end of June to cover us through the first week of June of next year, yes. and and purposely made that under 10 million to make that a little shorter than a year. So that we could uh, get a better rate, exactly. Um, so on June 8th or whenever that is of 2022, we will borrow again for what we're going to need until at which time USDA is going to loan us uh, the money. My 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 point is that money is not sitting in a checking account someplace. That's sitting with the bank, and we actually haven't. We, we've got an authorization from the bank that they will loan us that. We have $9 million in the bank. Yes. In, in our own account. Yeah. Yes. Although we've spent now a couple million sure. of that. Yeah. yeah, we had to, I think it was the USDA requirement, I think, that we had to borrow that full 
Well, I, 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 no, I forget what it was. It was it's amazing. just fiscal responsibility to, to make sure that you've borrowed for what you need. And yes, USDA required interim borrowing. Yeah. yeah. But you're right, you probably said, well, we're not going to spend it this year. Why are we borrowing at all? We had to borrow. John had a comment. I got uh, three or four of them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, First one, if you look at the columns in the middle of the page, it says mm -hmm. fiscal year all the way down, 2011 yep. to 2021. Then you got general fund, then you got enterprise fund, then you got total outstanding debt. I think that column looks fairly accurate. Okay, good. The equalized value, I have to assume that that's accurate. Population, I got to assume that that's accurate. But the total authorized debt is definitely wrong. Because you don't go from 564,500 one year to 5.4 million the next year, and 5.4 million next year, then back to 554,000. Yeah, you're so right. there's That column there needs work, and what it is is to clarify it for me. What I need is I need to go back through probably 2010 or 11, which is the beginning of this, and have somebody bring up all the different authorized debts that we had. From the school roof to the sewage treatment plant for the $1 million to the town garage for $6 million. And we need to show it in a logical, simple form to show this is what we borrowed, this was the day we borrowed it, and this is the payoff period for that. We're paying 3%, for example, or 16% on this loan for 20 years, and this is what the payments are each year. This is a principal and interest for each one. And by doing that, it brings all of us up to date for the last 10 years where we should be right now. And then in between all of that, I would like to have Trevor, when he gets time, to give us a good update on what the current status is on the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant, sure. what is going on, what the funding is for that, and what else do we have left to do in that to get that authorization that we voted $20 million to fix up that treatment plant to kind of get an idea of where we are. And then I would like to also ask for the town to come up with a priority list. The reason for a priority list is because we have a lot of projects coming up. And I think we have to know what the priorities are and we got to know what we're going to be doing. Like for example, it says we got Outstanding and unissued debt, 23 and a half million. I'm sure that that includes a 20 million and I'm sure it includes part of the town garage. Mm -hmm. I think we've already paid off for the school roof. I think we've already paid off for the property that we borrowed for over Keynes or Oxford, whatever you want to call it. But I really don't know where we stand on the relationship to any other one. Like for example, the school roof. We didn't borrow as much as we were authorized. Yeah. And then we agreed that uh, some of the tax exempts are going to give us money in town. And I don't know what the payoff schedule on that is. And the question is, where do we really stand on all of these separate issues in order to, to thoroughly understand for us and everybody else out there, I think we need to turn around, put this into one rolling form and see when we borrowed, what we owe, and when the payoff period is for each one of these. And then we need to know the major, major thing that we got in town is a safe South Therapy wastewater treatment plant. We really need to know where we stand on that yep. now, what the contracts are, what we're getting for our money, and what you anticipate in the future, because it makes a difference on what we do and how we do it. Because sure. we're at the 3% now, 5% is <laughs> the mark that we're at, where we're in trouble, we're at 3% now. The question is, where do we stand on the true library price? What do we stand on what we're going to do for the senior center? What do we owe for a balance on a garage debt? I just have a lot, lot of questions on this one form. So I'm just well, only a little confused. <laughs> no, yet I, I've I been there right yeah, along and I've I seen totally this happen. Yeah. And I, so, I, I would like to clarify that. And that's, I, to me, that's one way to clarify it. Yeah. I, I, let me make a quick statement and then you can go. Um, so I've forgotten the name of it already, that initiative, whatever, DCI thing. 
Yes. The goal of that is to lay out the, the priorities, priority. that's great. right? I think that's but a great I idea. think I would like the finance committee before that group meets to be able to say, here we are on what we're where we are on debt. Mm -hmm. And so I totally agree with you that we need that that list of, yeah. of, to to clarify what's here. I just here. I just <laughs> wanted to say the same thing about seeing that clarity of like exactly which which money is happening when and. Because right now, all we've been doing is every meeting kind of rattle it off. But it would be nice to be able to follow along. Yeah. So maybe we should ask Barb to come and present that. I didn't. I came away without my big budget book. But one of the things we approve in the budget book is the the outstanding debt, and it lists like what projects are there and how much is. It, what, what, we, on it. what we approve is what we're going to pay, pay this year, both for uh, maturing debt and for interest for this fiscal year. It doesn't say what our outstanding debt is. Um, but I can work on something. I can I can work on something uh, for that as well. And I think maybe we don't need to go back to. Th this looks to me like a typo on 2012 and 2013. I think there's too, too many zeros on it or something, or yeah. one too many zeros. But I think maybe we don't need to go back that far. I think what we need is well, everything that's outstanding right now, like any debt that we still owe any money on. The question is, when did we so, vote for the garage? Yeah, you, you voted right. that in 2012, and you that's didn't actually. I, I think that's accurate for a start. Yes, in exactly. between us. Because you bonded for that in 2000. 13, uh, no, excuse me, fiscal 14, which is why it went down, the total unissued debt went down from 5 million down to 232,000. Even with that 232, the 232,000 what was, was what was remaining on the energy debt Remember that? Yeah, we had that. We and then, that off early. And then we rescinded it. We rescinded the remainder of that. <laughs> Someplace in there, you get the frontier debt. Could be there. So. No, frontier debt is not is not a part of our outstanding debt. That's their debt. So, so where do we carry that? Our portion of it. Our portion <coughs> is an assessment from frontier. So an annual assessment from Frontier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, so, just like it is from, yeah. from Franklin Tech, we've got that one line item under under the schools for their capital. Okay. I wonder if one of the, I wonder if Frontier gets one of these indicator sheets. They have who's, a Julie, they do. who's policing Frontier at the state? school committee? School committee. <laughs> We can ask. Um, Bruce, you had a question like an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I think John explained it. Uh, uh, my question, what I did have is that it's coming up tail end of the meeting last week. Sitting on the finance committee, we already touched on the kids. It's one of the questions you want to make. It's 3% that you're talking about. Budget or that's a value. value. Equalized value. That, yeah, it's an equalized value. Okay, and I don't remember does the equalized valuation to tax Oh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. You're, you were an assessor. <laughs> I hope not because it's, it's yeah, I don't think I don't, I don't think, think it, it does. does. It's not it's not much different from our assessed value. The taxable value of the, the value of the town is a lot more than the taxable value of the town. Right. By hundreds of millions of dollars. But this seven hundred and seventy five thousand looks like something I've seen on the recap. So, so that it does exclude the I, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I, I'm not positive, but I would I would be pretty confident. We're we're not. So we're going to change the name of the indicator to debt load. Okay. 
and it includes, maybe you should answer this, short-term debt can go up to 10 years. If you go beyond 10 years, then you have to um, have a bond. Okay, that's so that's the official long-term debt. Correct. So we're, we're including in this all of our debt. So long-term debt would be all debt. When you're looking at this 3 or 5%, you're including all debt. Yep. Yes. Okay. And, I'm, and I'm assuming that along with this program that you're getting into this, you're going to exclude, as John said, the sewer system and all these others because... Right now, I think we authorized what 19. <clears throat> There's another at least 15 million that's going to go into that between your field and the infrastructure. Top of that. <laughs> that's not quite that. Yeah, I was going to say more than that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, yeah. That's, unfortunately, that's going to be yeah, unfortunately. Along with yeah. these, yeah. these, <laughs> yeah. along right. these yeah. other projects that are all multi million dollar projects on yeah. uh, the low end compared to sewer. So if I, I could, just can correct me if I'm not seeing this the same way as you are. Uh, Short-term debt, see that debt does not have a debt exclusion. Long-term debt, not necessarily. Well, not it could necessarily. be debt excluded and still be short-term. Yeah. Okay. Like the, the like the, well, the school, the yeah. school roof is debt excluded, but but we chose to not bond that because it was less than a million dollars and we felt like okay we so it then longer. it would be then long-term debt would be debt that we bonded for right even if it was less than 10 years right so right now our only long-term debt is the garage if i remember right right so the way what a treatment record if there's no nope, nope because we have a one-year ban on that so that's not long-term yet it will be once okay. we bond it that's included in this three to five percent that you're talking about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so any money any money that is owed, correct whether it's on bands or anything else, mm -hmm. is included is what you're looking at for this cap that you're trying to say on the right. And just as a side note, we should be selling the Oxford property here sometime soon. So the debt for the Oxford property will go away by the end of this fiscal year. Not that it's that big. Anybody else have comments on this? I've already said enough. Okay. We make one other comment. Yeah, is, go for it. <laughs> I guess the good thing is if you look at the new growth of this year. Can't hear you. The whole new format on the base. They can't hear you. Got to can you speak through the microphone or something, please? Yeah, can you sit on the other end and then you'll be near the mic? And then that way you'll be by this speaker. John couldn't hear you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I can't hear anybody either. I, I had my hearing aids adjusted and now they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so we can tell you anything. <laughs> so, so, so I was just saying, I, get, I, you know, I guess one outlook is the new growth is way up this year. Uh, which, in case, which would, of course, uh, up the base that we have for the uh, proposition two and a half struck. So that would help somewhat. Uh, but, but by the uh, uh, other side is the commercial industrial, which is always a good thing to have. The, the new growth on that very minimal. The per, uh, personal property very minimal. So. I hope that's not the beginning of a trend either on the uh, commercial and industrial as well. We're in here, we I think it's that. a bump in the system that we, you really cannot use in incorporating a average in the last couple of years. That has to be downgraded as far as using it for averages. You mean the new growth number? Yeah. Yeah, another year. 19, was a, coming, but, 19 yeah. was a huge bump, and 21 mm -hmm. was a huge bump, and those are totally abnormal. So, well, all those condos. 213,000. Uh, yeah. well, a lot of it comes from where I am now, too. Yeah. For the, for the you're, residential. you're right. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, that's, and that'll be all done, you know, so next year, you know. So, 
on that for the residential at all. Right. So, thank you. All right, so what I wrote down is check authorized plus unissued greater than authorized. Oh, not authorized, um, outstanding. I wrote down we need what was borrowed when, what is owed still, and the payment schedule. This doesn't include Frontier and Franklin tax. I wrote down does EQV, the equalized value, include nonprofit? But I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but I think we, it's that's a good point that we should. Well, it could include check. some nonprofit, but non taxable. Non taxable. That's yeah. a better word. Non taxable. Because you get a tax exempt. Well, you want to put it tax, tax exempt. exempt. You've got the you're filled in, which is owned by a nonprofit, but it is taxable. But it's still taxable. Okay. Tax Sorry, that was the wrong term. Anything else I should have written out down to figure out about this? Sure um, the other thing that's on the page is um, the bond rating. You can see what our bond rating has done over the years. Um, we're at AA3, so there is room for improvement. And if we improve it, then our our interest goes down, basically. <laughs> okay, next one is indicator 10, debt service. So debt service is... Um, how much we're paying on our debt each year out of the our operating revenues. Um, so this one we are in, we should be less than 10%. Um, we are at around three and a half, close to four, where's that number? 3.63 at the moment. Um, I think the reason that this is not higher is that the debt that we have on the sewer is very long term and some of the debt service for that comes from your user fees rather than the general fund. Um, so I think from my perspective, the debt service here is fine. The, let me ask you um, if I can. Go on, for it. On things like debt service, uh, well, take, take the sewer project and, and I'm just going to make up some numbers here. Let's assume that uh, total cost on the South Fairfield plant was $20 million uh, and that it was going to take four years to do it and we're going to do it $5 million a year. So that first $5 million, let's assume we paid 1% on short-term borrowing, so $50,000. $50, do we actually pay that or is that part of the become part of the long-term debt. Do you understand what I'm asking? No, I don't. Would you say okay. it again? So if we had a short, if we borrowed on <coughs> the sewer project or any other long-term, it's going to take years to, to complete. So if we borrowed $5 million, um, and we were paying 1% interest on it, for that first year, that eight year, fifty thousand dollars. Where does that get paid from? Well, you twenty-five percent of it is paid from the general fund, and seventy-five percent of it is paid from the wastewater. No, I, I didn't know. Just let's forget. Let's assume. All one. Just let's assume it's all for the moment. Where does it uh, mean? Or? The fifty thousand dollars is that? Do we actually pay that? Does Barbara write out a check for it, or does that come out of the $5 million that we borrowed? It, so, either way. So let's, let's say everything's equal. We're going to borrow $5 million, and then at the end of the fiscal year, we're going to borrow again, and there hasn't been any additional costs. If we decide we're going to pay down $50,000, we would borrow then $4,950,000 going forward. Mm -hmm. Is what we would do. Okay, so it comes out of the five. It comes out of right. the five. Thing. So, so for instance, when we started this whole project with the waste <laughs> treatment plant, USDA said the first two hundred and fifty thousand is your, your, your um, obligation. Mm -hmm. So, 
we borrowed and when we paid down, we when when we borrowed again, we took two hundred and fifty thousand out of that and allocated it through the two budgets. So we could have we could have borrowed two hundred and fifty thousand more than what we did, but we we chose to to reflect the that obligation in this fiscal year, actually in last fiscal year. I'm not sure that it's you can do it either way when you write a loan like that, because I've gone to the bank. They can either deduct the interest up front and give you the balance. If you go and say, I want to borrow $10,000, they'll turn around and say, do you want to pay the interest up front? Mm -hmm. And they deduct the interest off, and they give you a check for the difference between the interest and what you're borrowing. And then the other way is, no, I want the full $10,000 and add interest on to the end. So it can be done either way. Bookkeeping wise. So, so here's a for instance, the clarifier. We borrowed nine hundred thousand for the clarifier. The clarifier only cost us seven hundred and fifty-four thousand. So, at the at the end of this last fiscal year, we borrowed two hundred thousand less than the seven hundred and fifty-four thousand, which was our total cost. And that two hundred thousand was considered a payment of debt, a pay down of debt, and that hit the two the two funds. So so then when we paid that entire thing off in July, then it was spread again between the two funds. Does that help? Sort of. Yeah, I, it, it's it's a it's a hard concept to figure out the accounting aspect of it. It's quite a little rigmarole that I have to do to make that work. <laughs> Took me a while to figure it out, but with Tom's help, we got it. <laughs> well, it's, anybody's actually built a house, build your house. We did. You borrowed money from the bank. Yep. So you go to the bank and you say the contractor wants $6,000. Fine, they give you $6,000, and the next thing you know, let's say it was 100000 it's not that you still have ninety-four thousand to go. You've got ninety-three thousand nine hundred and twenty-two dollars because seventy-eight dollars was the interest charge for that. So that's typically the way the bank handles it. But you're right. You could have written a check for that seventy-eight dollars, mm -hmm. and then you'd only owe ninety-four. You would still have ninety-four thousand available. You're financing the interest. Yeah. Well, exactly. yeah. I guess that would have been the easier way. Do you finance the interest or not? <laughs> no. Depends. No easy answer to that one. Depends on what they feel like doing. I think we did with the school. I'm pretty sure we did with the school. We built the elementary school. End of the period. Total that we owed. I'm not sure it wasn't the same for the. You were here with the, the, the garage. So. We didn't finance okay. the interest. We pay that each year in addition to the principal. Questions from me? Anybody else have questions or comments on the debt service item? Um, you, 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 you mentioned here that, um, you know, the, this, this paragraph about it, about how the balance, but striking the balance between debt service and and operating budget. And I seem to remember in some previous meetings, I believe it was Mr. Pachorek was pointing out that operating budget tends to soak up everything that is available. <clears throat> um, are we going to have to start looking at at restraining or cutting the operating budget to make room for the Financing the increased debt load that we're going to be taking on in the next few years, and I mean, is that going to affect our our operating budgets going forward? Well, mm -hmm. May. May, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's a hard, that's question, that, for sure. Yeah. It really depends on. Um, we we are close to paying off the school roof. I think our debt right now is three hundred thousand. So. I, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, there's certain debt that will be gone and we will be taking on then debt. 
your goal should be to try to level that off as much as possible, but we haven't been the most successful at that yet. Should we consider paying off the school roof fiscal year? Not the, I don't. I want you paying for interest, whether it's worth You can't at this point. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Never tell us if you can. <laughs> well, once the tax rate is set, you're you're kind of locked in for what you can what you can pay down on excluded debt because you you've locked it into the tax rate. So what we did for fiscal 22 was we planned the hundred thousand down on the on the roof and the interest. Um, now, if you wanted to pay it off in fiscal year 23, now that okay. that's something like you can July easily first. do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not on June 30th. Correct. The one comment I did write down was need to project. Your comment has made me realize why I wrote that down, um, which is that the sewer debt, I feel like, hasn't hit us yet. You're right. You're right, it hasn't. It, the clarifier has because we've now paid right. off as of July. We paid off the entire clarifier. I think that's great. Yes. But with the um, the phase one upgrade, we're only paying interest. Right. That's all we're paying right now. Okay. It's fiscal 22. That's all we're paying is interest, and it's a it's a it's a minute amount because we received a, a premium on the ban that we took out, and the um, Financial Council said that it would be applied, you would apply that towards the interest. So our interest is only a total of like $10,000 between the general fund and the and the wastewater treatment plant fund. So it, it really won't be until we uh, bond with USDA that we'll start paying down debt. And will, do we expect that project South Deerfield to be completed this year. We don't do we? No. No, no. no. Yeah. Hopefully, though, in the in the next fiscal yeah. year. Mm -hmm. And that's the that's when we bond it, when it's done. When, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, Trevor. USDA will bond when we've hit that dollar amount that they said they would bond for. Right. And uh, then okay. we keep spending, and as we spend, then they give us money for the grant. Correct. Right. Uh, yes. I believe, yeah, we've got to use up like our first payment loan amount, and then we reach grant money. If we get into that grant money, then we get some extra money on it. And then we've done a couple different things on that project because we decided phase one was going to be a little bigger, so we've taken on more debt on that um, out of the phase two project a little bit. So uh, we're and right now we're planning to. Uh, start the design work so that we could apply for fit the phase two of that project, um, finish at 19 million, um, and try to get as much of all, all the things that we wanted to do in that. So right now we're talking about um, adjusting sewer rates coming up shortly to, to account for um, starting the plan, the design phase two, and then go and apply for that, that you know, loan and grant again. There's also be like three uh, loans with them because they treat that old bridge on the first phase as a as a secondary loan. Um, and, and then there's about a million six that'll be our obligation to pay, so we'll have to bond separately for that. So there'll be two loans with USDA and one on our own. Yes. It's a little complicated. It's complicated. <laughs> Yes, I can come give an update on all that stuff and probably have days for some help. We would need that. We would also need to get a projection of how much the sewer rates are going to go up sure. between now and the next five years. Yep, we can do that. Well, I don't know if I can do five years, but I can. Uh, the thing is, you can tell us for I, I the first year other than just $10,000 interest. Yeah. That one ain't going to make any difference. Right. What's important is when we start making payments. Yes. We want to know how much money you're going to have to generate yep. and the average service set for the average store user. Yep. And, 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 and the rates are being set 
so so that we're building up to that. So you, you have some retained earnings right. that'll be used towards um, the debt service so as we go huge. so that it's not this huge spike in the rates. Right. We have a rate hearing, I think, on the third, right? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. So correct. Yes. But that, that won't include any significant debt. Um, won't include paying for it right now, but it will include <coughs> ramping up so that we have reserves to pay for it. Yes. What is non-exempt debt? Non-exempt? That's the far right column, non-exempt debt. So it's the the next to last column is exempt is debt that we have voted oh. a and uh, um, a debt override for so that we have some debt that does not have a debt override voted on it that is being paid out of our essentially what do we have on it right now I would, I would say seventy eight thousand dollars I would say that's totally the um, clarifier. Oh. No, because I, our loan was five hundred and fifty-four thousand, so it would have. Um, so it. So it, well, you're right. It wouldn't be totally. So it'd be the, the principal on the clarifier, the interest on the clarifier, and then the interest on the New England Natural Bakers purchase. I'm trying to think, was there anything else? No, that was that should be pretty much yeah. it. That's why this sheet that you're going to make out for us is going to tell us all kinds of secrets. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and I know yeah, it's going to yeah. take some work to do it, too. <laughs> All right, piece of cake. <laughs> Always tempting. Do we feel yeah. like we can make an assessment, like pick a favorable, mm -hmm. marginal, unfavorable on this? I'm sorry, Julie, what was that? <laughs> it's for the committee. <laughs> I would propose for debate favorable in this current. I don't know where it's going to go. Like, it might be different next year. But right now, if we're aiming for less than, and we're at, is it 3.6? Something. 3.6, yeah. that sounds pretty good. It's just that we're kind of looking at wanting to keep an eye on that in the next couple of years. But argue with that. I'm not attached to my. I just, we needed to start somewhere. All right. Well, if that's a motion, I'll second it. Yeah. <laughs> What's your proposal? That this is favorable. No. We I argue would like that. to talk against that because I think, if anything, I would rather see us in the marginal column rather than saying it's favorable today and tomorrow we fall. Well, so maybe it was favorable. Is favorable more in the middle, and then unfavorable could be too high or too low? <laughs> you know, is that is that what sure. I'm saying? I know there was some comment, but as far as I'm concerned, anytime you have zero debt, that's favorable. <laughs> Where it says annual debt service in excess of 10%. If you look at the third column over from the far right, You've got enterprise debt service as a percentage of the total enterprise budget. For 2021, you have almost 15%, and on 2022, 18%. To me, that's marginal at best, even though considering all the other circumstances. I would rather see us either move towards unfavorable or marginal rather than saying this is favorable this year. My approach is long-term approach, not just a short-term, what looks good today is going to change tomorrow. I'm very, very conservative. Call me cheap at times, but that's okay. I've always spent, whenever I could, I try to spend town money like I spend my own. I'm a conservative person. I would just, I think I would add, you know, that's really margin more favorable. I, I think Either one makes sense, really, but I think um, I think 
leaning a little bit on what Ali was talking about earlier, I think we as a town should be looking at not always carrying zero debt. Like that's not good either. Like we should be, because it gets us in the position where we're at right now with like multiple projects and not enough money. So we always should be carrying not a huge debt, like not $19 million all the time, but a certain amount of debt so that we are looking at these capital projects and doing you know, doing the upgrades that we need to so they don't all fall at one, one time. So I think it makes sense to have, always be carrying some debt, and it's not good to have many years where we're not doing any debt I think all. $6 million on the garage is carrying debt, Yeah, you like it or not. I hear you. And the thing is, now we're going to spend 20 or $30 million or $40 million on the sewage treatment plants. You still got a library that wants money, and you still have... Uh, Senior center, senior center. School that needs and the school. Yeah. yeah. That's I would love to see us have a plan. I agree. <laughs> we need to work on that together for sure. Yes, a, a plan. And also, it seems like we keep, I, I, I've noticed that a number of things keep being treated as capital expenditures like school roof, the, the sewer pipe repairs, which to my mind seem like that isn't capital expenditures. That's maintenance. Right. We should be budgeting for those every year. Agreed. Um, and I okay, I don't actually know enough about the accounting and the accounting rules that y'all that we operate under. But it, it, you know, suppose we uh, allocated a relatively flat amount. If is is it possible to carry over balance to roll balances over, or does that require a new appropriation? For, for capital rate? items, yes. Well, but for not capital items, for maintenance. In other words, uh, no. Mm -mm. So we basically can't sure. have a maintenance revolving not, fund. You know, or if, if you had a specific contract that you had entered into before the end of the fiscal year and you haven't spent the money, then you can encumber those funds. But as far as carrying over, generally you don't carry over things um, unless they're capital of, of nature, um, capital in nature, or, or unusual special articles. And I think what he's talking about too is. is um, is like so the sewer pipe work, right? Instead of having that as a capital thing, we had it in our operating budget that every right. year. And we every year, that, I think, in an enterprise. yeah. Every year, assume that you're going to replace a certain amount of pipe because right. you probably will. But, you but if, for right. example, this year you but, don't, and then next year you're going to need extra, you know, it seems like rolling it over. To, it basically yeah. is a way of saving up for things rather than borrowing and to pay them off. Have that if you remember the. Uh, capital plan that the capital improvement committee produces every year. There's the amount that we're going to spend this year. And then there's five years, Four more years yep. of other expenses anticipated. Mm -hmm. So we do to some extent have that. Yeah. We, might, we might do a better job of that than what we're doing, but. When it, when it comes to the enterprise fund, uh, generally DOR does not allow us to set aside any reserves for anything specific. So either you spend it that year or it goes into retained earnings, of which you can use. Right. Um, uh, capital items, you know, when it comes to replacing the piping, does that extend the, the life of the pipe? Yes. So that's why that's considered a capital project, but I, I, I get what you're talking about in regards to maintenance. Within the struggle, the vehicle to put it aside. In. And, and as we've seen with the sewage treatment plant, deferred maintenance eventually becomes a much bigger capital project. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, getting back to whether this is favorable or unfavorable or marginal, I, I don't, I feel like it depends on what's happening. And, um, and debt service in particular is kind of a funny one because right now, you know, we're looking at a lot more borrowing in the coming years. And so having higher debt service means that we are going to need to look at the rest of our budget, all the other items on there to keep it in check, right, right in anticipation of debt coming more in the future. So I almost feel like you know, that the, the debt service is going to be kind of like an inverted ratio to the operating budget, the rest of the budget, which is what I think, Jim, you were saying. Um, and so maybe at this point in time, we want to think about, think about it more as a ratio, like what ratio do we want, how 
you know, that how much of our budget do we want to be focused on debt, debt, service. debt right. service, right? Because then it's going to inform how the rest of the budget looks um, or needs to look in order for us to be okay for this long term. Um, and given that we're looking at a lot more borrowing in the coming years, even though we don't necessarily have the chart that you know, we're all fantasizing about that shows exactly what <laughs> we'll be seeing. We can kind of yeah. imagine it's going to be big. And um, and so maybe that means if we have control over this, that we would want to hike up the debt service, which is going to add pressure to our budget process for the next couple fiscal years. But maybe that would be healthy. What if we... So the other thought it had is what if we change marginal to say like watch or something instead of calling it marginal. Yeah. So that it's something that a couple of these I'm like I think yeah, well, I think that's an word, you're but proposing. we need to keep an eye on it. Well, like, we well, don't have to be attached to labels necessarily. Yeah. You need to understand what the, what this category means and how it informs our decision. That sounds like a, a either an amendment or a separate motion. <laughs> so I'm feeling like we're leaning towards marginal. Oh, I feel mar marginal tells me, tells me we need to look at it yeah, and we don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Since we have a motion on the floor, I'm going to make a. I'm going to move that we amend the motion to say that we think this is marginal, not favorable. I'll, I'll second your amendment. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment to the motion? So what are we saying is marginal? Debt service. Six. Indicator. Six indicator, right on indicator for the town. Second. And the rationale behind, I would argue that the rationale behind calling it marginal instead of favorable is that even though we're at 3% for the town, we're at 18% for the enterprise fund, right. and there is the prospect of additional borrowing coming, oh, yeah. so there's going to be more debt service in the future, and that's going to impact our our operating fund mm -hmm. and the money we have available for that. Second the amendment. I already did that. Oh. Sorry, but you, you can have it. Already. No, this is, okay. as long as there's been know. somebody been doing it. All right. <laughs> you can put a third right. on Any it. discussion <laughs> on the amendment? <laughs> okay, we have to vote on that, right? Everybody in favor of amending as we just talked about. Roll call vote, right? Yep. John Petruk, aye. Jim Olmstead, aye. Julie Chalpin, aye. James Cambius, aye. Allison Vanderbilt, aye. John Pareski, aye. All right, that's unanimous. One, two, three, six, zero, zero. All right, so now we have a motion on the table to say debt service as a category is marginal. Any discussion on that? No. Would you like to vote? John Petruk, aye. Uh, Skip Olmstead, abstain. Julia Chalf, and I. This can be a sigh. Allison Vanderbilt, and I. John Pareski, aye. That's a 501. All right. So, moving on to indicator number 11, which is reserves. So the recommended um, kind of the I don't know that there's a recommendation a level of reserves, but the comment was reserves below five to seven percent of revenues may be considered unfavorable, um, and our revenues are pretty healthy compared to that five to seven percent level, um, and we have them set aside for a variety of things. So we have a decent amount of certified cash, free cash each year. We have a stabilization fund. We have an enterprise fund retained earnings, which is pretty high right now because the sewer is storing up money to be able to pay off this debt. Um, I guess that's all I have. Anybody want to talk about this? Yeah, I have a question. Go ahead, John. Um, I don't know if would, it would be right to include enterprise fund retained earnings in the calculation, 
because I don't think it, the enterprise fund revenue is on here, is it? That's a good point. Or expense. Yep. Yes, good point. I don't understand that point. So he's saying we're comparing our enterprise, our total reserves to our operating budget as a percent of our operating budget. That operating budget. That operating no, budget it does might, include. might include both. It both includes enterprise funds the enterprise it fund. It's a little higher than yeah. our operating budget. Um, the general fund budget. So it includes so the, it includes the sewer budget. I I think yep. so. I can't tell you for sure, but I I believe so. The other thing about this whole spreadsheet is it does not include the capital stabilization fund. Um, oh, good point. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that was the yeah. other question that I had. Yeah, I, I think. Um, oh, I thought I had mentioned that to you, Julie, but but it it does not include that, so. Uh, it's not a true picture of everything that we have. Okay. What's the balance in that fund? Or uh, like, right, right, doesn't need yeah. You know, it, it was it was like eight hundred and sixty-seven thousand, and then we we just spent one hundred and fifty out of it, right? So whatever. Should that be is. on this thing, right? Seven hundred thousand, a little more than seven hundred thousand. Yeah, seven seventeen to eighty-six. There you go. Seven seventeen. What's that? I said I agree with the favorable rating on that. Our reserves are mm -hmm. really good. Also, we want to make sure that anybody who's listening from the town understands that we're not going broke, like yeah. somebody was putting out on uh, yeah, this exactly. information. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We are in good shape. We are in good shape. Most. As a matter of fact, if I've got one pet peeve, it's that typically try to be conservative, but yet if you look through the eyes of the state, we are a rich community. We are. Because we have a lot of money in reserves. When I first started as a selectman, I remember when we were worried about a million dollars, having a million dollars free cash. At that same time, Springfield had a minus $50 million in free cash. And what happened to that? Nothing. <laughs> they got taken over by the state. Well, the bottom line is that <laughs> we think we got problems. Look at other communities. They have a lot problems, worse problems than we have. And we have been good savers regardless. <coughs> is it fair and reasonable to expect that this in a, a few years time is going to be a much smaller percentage as our as our spending and our borrowing increases with these big projects? The only thing that we're going to have less of is the enterprise fund. Yes. Yeah. But we're going to, all the other markers that you have in there will still be there. Still going to have a CPA fund. Still going to have free cash coming in. Maybe you won't have quite as much, but we've had free cash over a million dollars for 10 years or better. Might decide that you need to use some of that stabilization we, money for some of the capital projects. Right. And I, so, for me, I, I still think we're, I agree with you that we're in favorable on this one. With quick questions for whoever can answer them. If I look at the operating budget numbers, mm -hmm. and I look at 2018, 2019, 2020, those are all sitting, actually 21 too, but um, 17,500,000 in 18, 17,200,000 and 17,200,000 both in 19 and 20, and it drops to 17 million in 2021. Um, what? Does that include the enterprise funds? I, I believe it does. I haven't actually gone through the numbers to, to know, but it would make sense to me that it includes those. And it would also include debt service, right? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, I've got this figure that I'm sitting here that I got from you that said that total operating, total revenues was 16200000 and that would not include enterprise funds, I would assume. Correct. Okay. 
So this does the operating budget then would include enterprise funds as it's listed here. Favorable on this one. Are you making that as a motion? I don't think I need to because it's already on here, right? Okay. I'm making up the rules as we go along. <laughs> at some point, I, I feel like right now we're just discussing it all. And then at some point, I want to come up with what we think is a final version that we would then like post on the website for everybody to be able to dig through and look at. But I want us to be comfortable with it before we post a final version for everybody to start. For whatever it's worth, I think you did a great job putting this dashboard indicators out there because it gives us a lot of introspection. We can turn around and look to see where we really are. And I'm glad to see that this is being done, and I'm glad to see we're working on it. Now we can marry this up with the long-term projects to figure out what we can afford to do. All right. And you need a bigger dashboard next time. <laughs> so what I wrote down for this one was add capital stabilization fund, and do we want to put CPA funds on here too? We should add a column in there if we can. Yeah. That way it's a little more of a... We can add the column. Oh, oh, those are one that you want uh, to put in CPA. Oh, in Balance there. in the CPA account. Yeah. That's money available for... That's money that's available. Yeah. Although, but it's restricted. Yeah, it's it is very, restricted. Very restricted. Mm -hmm. Do we but the other one, I mean, stabilization, stabilization is restricted. restricted. Enterprise is restricted, right? So long, it's stabilization would be listed so separately, right? Yeah, it would be a separate okay. column. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. yeah. I would dump the stabilization, all the stabilization funds as far as this goes. You can put them all in one. I think capital and just the general stabilization? Yeah, because if you look at everything that we've done with capital uh, or we set it up, but it can be used at the town's discretion as just a stabilization fund. Somebody probably first. Yeah, we can keep here? it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll just make the numbers all a little smaller. So that it's <laughs> tough to see <laughs> if it looks like you've got $2 million in stabilization. We look richer. I don't want to do that. I want us hey, to look poorer. Split it out. <laughs> we'll split it out and we'll add that. Anything else? You're here. Don't worry. Give us some time. We'll Six. look poorer. <laughs> it's like I, I, I had to argue with both our representative and our senator. Oh. Where do we really stand? Do you look at our reserves or anything or our cash accounts that we get in a bank when you turn around and dictate how much money you're going to give us? And they tell me, no, 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 we don't look at that. Well, that's a bunch of hogwash. <laughs> of course they do. They turn around and say, this community can afford it. We're giving them nothing. Yep. And if you look at the state shade, aid page, we're going to give you the extra 500000 we would have given Deerfield. So I'd rather look poor rather than richer. Like saving for college, huh? I'd rather not be poorer. I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. Poorer. That's why we're working on it. <laughs> All right. So anything else on Indicator 11 that we should talk about? No. I think the, the favorable reserves um, look good in our financial statements so then companies that are lending us money give us better rates. I agree. Part of the reason our I bond agree. rating is better, better than it, it could be otherwise. And I hope we've already paid those bills that were voted at town meeting. Tax due bills from a year and two years ago. Yep. We did. We did. I don't want to last, add last, uh, Yep, on the 13th of October. Yep. Those were done. So let me ask, would you... The difference in colors here, what is that supposed to represent? Nothing. Um, so the is green... that distracting to have all those little bars on there? Or is it... Only when you're colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> only when you look at them and say, 
Oh, combined reserves. That's red. Does that mean, or, or stabilization? It's a, a reddish color. No, no, no. It doesn't mean it's bad. Yeah. So let's make them all green. Or not, oh, then you can't decipher okay. the difference. Blue and gold. Okay, so they don't blue need gold. gold and white. Can okay, I make them blue and yellow? <laughs> Just don't make them Avoid black. red Avoid black. and yes. green. <laughs> yes, that's so the big one. Black. Nicely there. Go ahead, Dad. Um, when you look at the graph in the upper left, it has yes. colors. Yes. I think it would be helpful if those colors matched the data below. The columns. Okay. Yeah. And then I think we should keep the colors. Because I when oh, you look at the go. graph, I think yeah. it helps a lot. Colors match. Okay. okay. That's that's my opinion anyway. I did on one of them, but not all. All right. Help you any. And just nope. And when, you, when you print them, print them black and white. Uh, save money. But. <laughs> okay. So indicator twelve is population and the age breakdown of the population. And then I found a different source. So there's two different sources of data here. One is. U.S. Census Community Survey, and the other is off of the DLS Gateway, which is where all the rest of the stuff came from. Um, and I was tripped up by the fact that if you look at our overall population, we rose for a while, and then since 1990, we essentially have been 5,000 and haven't changed. So we're just we're at 5,000. Um, if you look at the age cohorts as a percent of the total population. The red line is 20 to 54. The orange line, I'm sorry, John. Um, the middle line is um, 55 plus, and the, the, the categories are actually 55 to 64 and 65 plus. Um, but if you add the two of those together, you see that number rising quite a bit. And then the blue line, the bottom line there is our school age population essentially is under 20. Um, so I was tripping out by the fact that it looks like our labor force is dropping, the red line, the top red line is dropping, and our retired or headed towards retirement age is rising. And if you flip it over to indicator 12A, the labor force has been pretty steady over time. And I finally figured out that if you put that 55 to 64 category and you add it to the 20 to 54 instead of the 65 plus, then that number stays pretty steady. So that means that the two sources of data, data correlate better and I'm happier now once I finally figured that out. Um, but it means it's been sort of masking an approaching exactly. drop. Right. So these numbers are 2010 through 2019. The 2020 number, which was the real census, hasn't come out yet. So I would like to see the 2020 number to make sure it Breakdown. agrees with what this. I don't know where the one-year thing comes from. I don't know how they, they come up with that number when there's not an official census. So I would like to see the 2020 number. To, to confirm what this all is before I make like a final judgment on it. Um. Some, I guess, questions about, I think a lot about these types of demographics and data in my job, which is healthcare. Right. And I'm just interested, I guess, in maybe like a conversation about what does it actually mean for a municipality? Because um, I, you know, I, I'm, I need to get out of the world of like chronic disease management and because we don't do that <laughs> as much here, you know, but we do have, uh, you know, EMS fire and we have schools and so like, what does that mean for a municipality really? Aging population means that fewer people, that you're going to have more demand for elder services and fewer people uh, you know, Lloyd. Although for a town, that doesn't make much difference. We're not getting income tax, are we? People pay the taxes whether they're. Yeah. 
They pay so taxes the I, until they run out of money, and then they sell the property and leave town. Yeah. The way I was thinking about it is a higher percentage of retired people are on fixed income. So when you have your tax rate going up, it's harder for people who are on fixed income people who are not. I'm not, I mean, I'm not an expert. This was just what was going through my mind as yeah. I was looking through these numbers. Well, that's why I posed um, it, because I'm, I definitely am coming to it with a set of assumptions, but it, they're assumptions from an entirely different field that I didn't know if right. they actually carry over. Um, oh. No, I'm done. Well, the other side of that is, is uh, they have a harder time uh, paying their tax because they are on fixed income, in which case they go in and get abatements, which of course reduces the town's revenues. <clears throat> so you end up with the circle going around. Uh, the other thing is, as it becomes harder and harder for them to afford their taxes, they don't maintain their houses, which is, is a direct correlation as well to the value of the real estate that's in town as well. So you have, as well as, as you said, an increase in, in the cost of elder services besides. Uh, so there is long-term effects as this number keeps growing that, uh, you know, uh, there is long-term economic effects, <coughs> unfortunately mostly negative. And the other thing, and I'll uh, use this town as an example, but a lot of towns are facing the same thing, is um, too many generation that is volunteering right now is having to stay in the place that they are because next generation is not willing to take over. So to fill all the <laughs> committees and boards, so, I mean, in, in general, okay, to fill these boards is getting harder and harder. You may have to, all these towns may have to consider hiring people down the road to do more operation of these towns, in which case it's going to cost more for the towns. Okay. We may have to start considering professional managers because uh, people are not putting in and helping out in the community as much. Fortunately, you know, we have a few people. I'm glad to see uh, you and you and Trevor and, uh, you know, there's still some youth in there, but unfortunately it's, it is starting. All right, all right, all right. who here is under 50? Oh. Alex. When, when, I left the, when I left the assessor's office, uh, there was three of us within a year apart, and we're all in our 70s. Now, fortunately, we got two uh, young people in there right now, uh, but uh, and there has been an influx of newer people in the town hall as far as employees and so forth, because that was starting to age out. But uh, I say I'm concerned with a lot of these committees, because there is a lot of committees that really are in dire need of help, and they have they have to exist as a committee. So we may have to uh, look at hiring other people to start managing the town, which is another expense. You notice that Bruce is a philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> well, you asked like two cents, you got like two cents. You got three. I miss you on the committee, Bruce. It's nice to hear yeah. your, your yeah. thoughts again. You were late to well, come to the meeting, Bruce, because she announced that there's one opening on the finance committee. Right. <laughs> I, I think the conversation about getting more and new people, I won't say younger people because I think there's plenty of older people who also might just not be involved for other reasons. I think that's an issue for the, the town to really think about like how and, and why aren't people as, as motivated or, or able to, to help and how can we support people and who want to maybe learn about a new committee. Um, I don't think that's entirely the purview of the finance committee. But I do think we have an so issue. They were actually talking about that at the personnel committee meeting last night um, and talking about coming up with a, I should not recap the personnel committee. <laughs> I'll tell you what I heard, but this is not like, don't consider this uh, personnel committee thing. Uh, what I heard was that they're going to come up with a process that more clearly advertises what positions are open and how you can apply for them and whatever. And they also talked some, but didn't, I, I don't think came to any resolution over, like when a new person joins a committee, how do you get up to speed? Mm -hmm. um, and having some sort of, like, 
finance committee, there's a finance committee handbook, which is lovely, and somebody else makes it, which is even more lovely. So, but um, yeah, but some of the other committees don't have that kind of. Well, and it, it takes a certain amount of courage to like dive in if you've never done it before. I happen to be very pushy, but you know, not everybody is, and they might add value to. Probably more. <laughs> Oh, my opinion on this? Yeah. My opinion of item 12 on the dashboard of indicators, population and age, is simply whole hum. <laughs> there ain't nothing we can do about it. Exactly. There ain't nothing we can do about it. So we should be. Oh, so I ain't going to worry about it. I think if one thing bothers me about this information, it's that our kids are not staying in town. Our town is not growing, our town is stagnant, and that's the only thing that bothers me. Our kids are, are leaving town for bigger and better things. And it's been stagnant for 30 years. Yes. It has been. Yeah. Well, just just maybe. throw this out because yeah. there's absolutely nothing to do with But I don't, you were the one that mentioned younger people, or did you mention younger people? I don't, I try not to bring them up. Okay. <laughs> so, in, in, and I picked 1984. I can pick 1983. Why don't I pick 1983 because my birth... I was born in 1944. This is the people that are on the school committee. I was on the school committee, elementary school committee. Tom Clark was on the elementary school committee. Bob Decker was on the, MA, uh, the school committee. M.A. Swedland was on the school committee. Joanne Sherman was on the school committee. And I'm going to throw in another one because there's, there's one that's uh, uh, Kathy uh, Melnick. No, he wasn't. Well, this is not, not 1984. Okay. <clears throat> so if you look at all of those people, I think I was the oldest one. I wasn't quite 40. It gives you an idea of the, how times have changed. It would be nice. But that's if, the school committee. <clears throat> and most of those are yeah. parents of mm -hmm. kids that are in school. Yeah. yeah. Because they had a vested interest in that. <coughs> uh, yeah. For the most part. Today, you get Ken Cutterback, who's yep. approximately my age, a little younger, maybe about a year or two. Um, and I'm yeah. not sure of the other members, but they're not under 40. Yeah. That was what I was trying to get across. Was do, do they have kids in school? Because people who <coughs> have families later, or, or the trend has been... I, did, that's why I got involved. Yeah. Well, I did too. That's why I got involved. But, Kids, yeah, got involved. Um, involved in they're not attached to the school committee now. Involved, like she's that. been on it for a long time. Have two other younger members but there's two well now, younger women that are on it. Um, yeah. I know there's another one. Two young people get involved right in that committee. I, I picked that just because I was on it and I knew who all the other members. But you had a similar situation on all of the other committees where you had younger people than we do today. And it's, and it's difficult. It's difficult to get somebody in their 40s or 30s to volunteer. Unfortunately. Well, I'd like to point out one thing, which is that. And up the flip side of that is that you said that people, that children are leaving town, you know, that people grow up here and then move somewhere else. But the flip side is that people move here from elsewhere as well. I mean, half of this committee uh, did not grow up here. I never went to Frontier. I, you know, who, who grew up here? I was born in South Deerfield. Right. The rest of us. Okay. That was before he went to the hospital to be born. All right. So <laughs> most of most of us then did not grow up here. So you know, it, the the bucket empties, but it also fills. Yeah. I, I, and it's still stagnant at five thousand people. I think that there is a conversation for the finance committee to have though about this, and I and I do care. I mean, if we're thinking about how we want to develop the town, and we're looking at projects, you know, around the school or the library or a town common, you know, any, anything like that, those are projects that are more likely to attract, you know, newer families or, 
you know, older people who want a community center, things like that. And so I think that there is probably an indirect impact on our tax base and our, um, you know, our demographics and all of that stuff that I think we would be foolish to think we can understand it with one indicator, but it's probably wise to just think about it occasionally and, and you know, consider when we're investing in different projects in town, like what some of those broader impacts might be on, on who lives here. If you want the girl to town quickly, all you got to do is send Biden a letter and he'll send a, a midnight flight in and drop them off in Connecticut and plus them right up there for us. <laughs> we also want to think about the... That's right, they could go on to Turner's. I thought they had Westchester, New York, set up as a permanent base. <laughs> so the other piece of that is also things that encourage um, businesses that will employ people, um, and because and people leave because there's a job. <laughs> well, I was thinking about that. You know, increasingly we are essentially we're part of a megapolis which runs from Springfield to Burling, uh, 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 yeah. Bennington. You know, where, um, you know, does how many people who live in Deerfield work in Deerfield? Yeah, good point. I've never worked in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we need to say anything else about our population? Do we have any opinion on a. Uh, see you later. Thanks for joining Um the labor force side of it with the, uh, I don't know that there's anything to say about it other than, it is what it is. I don't think we need to judge it too much. <laughs> I'm surprised that it's that, that those are people that are, who are in, in town who are employed. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Including self-employed. <coughs> I don't know where this data comes from. I don't know where the number comes from. Yeah. No, and sometimes what they tell you on the report isn't exactly where the data came from, either, <coughs> as we discovered with one of the earlier ones that we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, every year you fill out a census form. Yeah. And you indicate your. Oh, with the town. That's a point. Yeah, you're point. right. So that's probably yeah. where it comes from. I would bet you're right. Yep. Okay. So that was the last one we had said that we were going to go over this time. Um, do we want to pick out some to talk about next time? That sounds like a wise idea. That way we. I think it worked pretty well this time. Um, do you want to just start at the beginning? Start at the beginning, or are there some that you feel so, like are particularly important to look at? I think one through four are all kind of related because they're all money coming in. Okay, one through four, including A, B, and C below four. I think the levy limit's important. Okay. Myself, so that's my opinion. To include everything before indicator five. Yeah. I think next time you could very easily do uh, one through five, and then only have one session left for six through eight A. Okay, five is easy. Five is so, easy? Five is easy. So, so that's value and new growth. We've got to make sure Bruce is here to explain that. <laughs> So let me look. That's going to be fairly easy. <laughs> okay. So next time we will do one through five. Have a meeting scheduled? We do not. That's one of our agenda items. Oh, I'm sorry. I just said. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We can talk about that now. Maybe we should talk about that now. What's that? When are we going to meet next? I'm going to be at the town next. The first two weeks in November. So if you all need to meet during that time, my feelings won't be hurt if you meet without me. 
Otherwise, um, second half of November. I hope you're going someplace warm. I'm not going to this warm, but I am going on vacation. After, but after the, we do run into Thanksgiving after yeah. the third week. Yeah. Here, work a couple extra hours so you can afford to pay for your turkey. Let's sort of suggest the third week. We are. Target. Fifteenth through nineteenth. You want to meet next week, or you want to meet the week? Oh, well, I mean, if you want to meet sooner, but. Allison would not be able to attend. Now that I have to take the minute. Uh, <laughs> I'm available any day, the week of the 15th, except for Thursday. I'm doing pretty good on Tuesday. How about we agree we'll meet on Tuesday? Now we just got to pick out the date. I could do the 16th. Um, I can, I'm getting there. Hang on. <laughs> I could do the second. So what if we do the second and the 16th and try and just finish this off and be done? Okay, and with that. are we starting at five? Second's election day. Oh. Thank you. Uh, no, we don't have any election here. Do we not have a town election? We do not. We do not. Oh, okay. So it doesn't we, matter. That way we can go on campaign. Yes. Yeah. Is there any Google, Google threw that down my throat. <clears throat> so we've got two meetings coming up, one on Tuesday, 2nd November, and one on Tuesday, 16 November. 2, 11, 16, 5, 5 p.m. Yeah. Okay. And it will be lighter. Yeah, it so. should be pretty much, I think, just the financial so we have, indicators. No, we have some yeah. light is what I was talking about. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Daylight savings. Yeah. Actually, it's oh, it'll, so be it'll, darker. Be even worse. it'll be darker. It'll be darker. It'll be darker. Yeah. That's right. No, not the yeah. second. It doesn't kick in until the fifth or something. All right. Right. We have one more thing on our agenda, which is the role of the Finance Committee. I vaguely remember committing to documenting what we talked about last week. So I gave a shot at that, um, which I think you guys have copies in front of you. But what I did was include the MGL Chapter 39, Section 16, it looks like this. Anybody's looking for that? So I just wrote down the MGL, Chapter 39, Section 16, Chapter 40, Section 6, and then the Town of Deerfield Bylaws on the Finance Committee. So that is all documented there if anybody wants to look at it for any reason. But the this, um, I think, this first section, this just one, two, three, items is what we said. This is my take on it. Um, great. Looks good. Yeah. Well summarized. Yeah, you did a great so summary. Does anybody like to change I want, anything? I don't want to go to your head, but you're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> John has his hand up. Oh, go, John. Sorry. Okay. Hey, I put my November glasses back on so I can see you. November 2nd is a week from today. Oh, it is? Right? Yeah. 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 Goodness gracious, how did that happen to us? Um, do we really want to... Fun, John. You know, I'd like to just take the time to look over stuff but instead of rushing okay. over a week. But that's just me. All right. Do I do the ninth instead? And look at the that. Following week on the Not a thing on my calendar on the ninth. We can't meet. We're going to ruin my only day. <laughs> well, we could just go three. I'm not available on the ninth. But You're not. Okay. I, and I, you know, when we're talking about these first items, total receipts, yeah, net operating revenues, we definitely need property Brenda. tax revenues, levy limits, tax bill, uh, 
And make it on the second. Let's just make it on the 16th. And we'll worry about the next meeting after that. Okay. Thank you. Meet on the 16th. You know, you could do the 16th and then plan on uh, the next, uh, the, the two Tuesdays after that on the 30th, maybe. Okay. Do we need to decide the second date tonight? No, but no. I'm going to put it in my calendar now. Just let's do, let's tentatively say we'll do the 16th and the 30th. And that's a good point, John. Maybe and then, then, Julie, I can take a more a closer look at some of this, and I can add in the Schedule A net revenues, um, which remember it wasn't wasn't in there. I right. I've been working on that report, so. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so roll the finance committee. We're going to, what are we going to do with this? <laughs> How that is written. Pass it off to the next person that they hire. Keep it, yeah. Just keep it. Okay. So this, didn't we discuss wanting to formally um, just kind of present it to the select board. To the board so that everybody's clear on what, I think it was a matter of communicating between committees. It might not have just been the select board. It may have also been. Or I would, the school committee, uh, whoever else. Ultimately, I would like to incorporate those the uh, two state laws in an abbreviated form the the, uh, into the town's finance committee bylaw. That would have to be done at the next meeting. Yeah. 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 Does that mean Skip volunteering to? Up, update the bylaws and <laughs> draft it. I suppose one way or another that Doug's the one that's pushing it. It would only make sense that I am willing to do that. Congratulations. Well, I'm going to go get somebody to help. <laughs> okay. So the other thing that we talked about last time, maybe we'll save this for our next meeting, is the budget schedule. And that's the last thing I handed out you um, and we were talking about like when we got information and it would be nice to have it laid out so then um, I would volunteer to take this I think the school committee is the one that we need to talk to the most and um, go and talk to the or not the school committee but the school administration um, is there a date that the personnel board does the classification compensation plan there's by? never been a specific date um, boy, it seems like it's later than I'd like it to be, but. Last well, year, we managed to get it done in, in December, but. I, I, as far as um, establishing the budget goal for the upcoming fiscal year, usually that's cool. done in November, and I try to send out the budget sheets before the end of November so that department heads have a month and a half be able to work on their budget. Some of them are working on it already, but. So do we want to say like November 15th or something as a uh, like target? Um, November. Yeah. Because you need that before you can send I that. I do, that yeah. One. And there's Thanksgiving in there. Right. Okay. Right. John has his hand up. Thanks, oh, Alex. Go ahead, John. Um, as the finance committee's rep to the personnel committee, a personnel board. Yeah. There has been absolutely no discussion in our meetings about the <coughs> compensation classification schedule. So maybe when you ask the department heads, give them a request, you should include the personnel board. That would be a big administrator reaction. <laughs> I was, was going to say the town administrator meets with them and 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 schedules that with them more than I I would have anything All to right, do with that. Tracy, them. yeah, Casey's watching, so. Yeah. Um, or I can bring it up next meeting. Now. She just unmuted. May I speak? Yep. Please. I did advise the personnel board at their meeting last night that I would be presenting them by November 15th 
something for them to chew on so that they can have a decision made in December. Oh, because I missed that. I'm sorry. They need to they need to have that ready for budget season. I'm very well aware of that the fact that we need to get that ready. So then I really wouldn't be able to put out budget sheets until December. On November 30th, wait a day. Oh. So, Casey, if you had to pick a date that you thought the personnel board would be ready, personnel committee is a better word, huh? would be ready it's the to. Board. It is a board. board. It is yeah. a board. Okay. It is a board. Um, so, if we're putting down, so this isn't like the goal of this isn't to hold, it is to hold people's feet to the fire. It's not like a law. It's just like, here's what we would like the schedule to be. So if there were a date that we were to ask the personnel board to establish the classification compensation plan, what would you recommend? I would say mid-December. Like December 1? Huh? I would say mid-December because they're going to need a little bit of time to chew on it, just like you would ask and you would give right. any other for it. I guess my question yeah, is, yeah. when are you planning on sending out your budget schedule? Like, what's your due date for budgets? That's not something I'm privy to. Well, it's hard for me to be able to coordinate that if I don't know what you're talking about. The due date for the budgets last year was January 15th. And so um, I was anticipating that it would remain the same for this year. And it looks like that's what Julie was thinking about with her schedule. But in order for me to even put the budget sheets together to send to people, I have to have rates. Um, it doesn't mean every year I'd go through this same thing. I have to send out the budget sheets with rates that don't, aren't updated. And, and I can do that again. Uh, because I like to have those budget sheets to people so that they have a good amount of time to put them together. Could you use the one? So Casey's going to present it November 15th to the personnel board. Can you use those draft numbers and like write draft in big letters on it? And Or is that confusing and better not to do anything? Typically, that goes before it goes to the departments. It has, at least in the past, gone to the board of selectmen for their input from the personnel committee to the board of selectmen. And they, well, they have in the past at least voted on it, <clears throat> at least once or twice that I remember. I don't know. How or maybe they tabled it and they didn't do it. Pardon? I don't know how that works. That way it was. Casey and I will figure it out. Okay. <laughs> um. The problem is that the personnel board has to make a recommendation to the board of selectmen. And it's a little bit confusing because the board of selectmen should put out guidance to all departments. Say that this year we want a level budget. We want right. So that's people on you have hired, but no increases. Yeah. They, got, they should put something out for guidance. That's that's what happens when I send out the budget sheets. There's an attachment that an comes attachment from the select that, board okay, saying fine. what they expect. That's what they should be doing. No. And what happens is then after the personnel committee has hearings, then they can turn around and say, yeah, we recommend a 2% across the board increase or whatever. How about I send this to Casey? Casey, is that okay? So this draft thing, how about if I send this to you and you can um, opine <laughs> and we can figure something out? Well, we could talk about how to coordinate that because okay. there are hearings involved. So yes, 
it, it would help if I knew what your expectations were, because we also have to coordinate with capital and with the select board, not just on the classification compensation plan, but the guidance to that Jack just mentioned and what our expectations in terms of getting information back to the board as well. Okay. Uh, I, can I speak? The, um, I think the, one of the main goals behind the finance committee putting together this calendar in the first place, Casey, was because we all agreed that we needed information from the schools sooner than we've been getting it. And the finance committee wanted to meet with the schools and find out if that was a possibility so that going forward, we'd have better information sooner to be able to put the budgets together, right? Right. Yeah. Not not that they wanted to control the process. No, not at all. For, Just for everybody like, involved, yeah. but mainly to get the schools more on board with with information sooner than we've been getting it. Okay, so we're going to table this and I'm going to talk to Casey about it. Talk to Casey. Got it. Um, any other items not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting? Nope. Do they have anything else they want to talk about? No new business. Next meeting dates are set. All right. Are we done? Second. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.